Penne says, Ed, could you tell us the symbolism of washing feet in the old world? All right. Do I want to do this now? Okay, we're going to do this now. I wasn't planning on doing this now. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the, the commercial. Jesus gets us. He gets us, I think is what it's called. Jesus gets us or something like that. And it is um, about a minute long commercial. It aired in the Super Bowl that has a bunch of people really, really angry about it. Now, I'm not, what I'm about to say is not in defense of the commercial or the organization that made the commercial or the, um, the efficacy of evangelizing in this way or anything else. But the commercial itself, what I saw, because our, our friend Tim sent it to me, the commercial itself is actually pretty moving. And in the commercial, again, it, it's 12, 12 still pictures, you know, just sort of one at a time, of people washing the feet of other people. And the people who are washing the feet of the other people are... They, they, you know, it's it's a person from from one segment of our population washing the feet of somebody that you might see as a, a person in an, in, a, in an opposite segment of the population. Um, for example, there's there's one scene of a protester washing the feet of a counter protester, and there's a scene of an older woman washing the feet of a younger woman in front of a uh, family planning clinic. Um, there's a, an image of, of a priest uh, washing the feet of, of a man. Um, there is uh, the image of a person washing the feet of a woman holding a baby in front of a bus. Like the images are very vague they don't tell you anything that's going on really that's going on for these characters it's just but you can obviously you can see that the person that the person washing the feet comes from a different place than the person whose feet are being washed until the very last one and it just shows these two men um these two older gentlemen with their feet in a bucket of water together at the same time almost now that i think about it reminiscent of that image of mr rogers and and i can i i was never a mr rogers guy uh and this was way before my time so i, I apologize but the police officer the african-american police officer that this was a huge controversy at the time apparently that they had their feet in the same water the same pool of water at the same time they were just getting cooled off that image is, is reminiscent of that. Now, when I say it's got some people riled up, it does. The responses, the, the negative responses from Christians to this, to these images is, is very much along the lines of sinner. These are sinners. And we shouldn't wash the feet of sinners until they repent. And now you're looking at these pictures. You have... I, you can't tell me who the sinner is. You can't tell me if anybody is a sinner. All you know is that, really, all you know is that these are people from two different worlds. Right? That's that's all you really get from looking at these pictures. Obviously, one person is from a different world than the other person. But I, in particular, there was one um, anti-abortion group who was freaking out because here's a woman, an older woman, washing the feet of a younger woman at family planning clinic. And how they were going on it. Well, this is this is a pro-abortion. This is pro-abortion. You have no idea what's happening, and that's one of the, one of the lovely things about images. You have no idea what's happening. But, and I think this is important. Your response tells the world about what's happening in here for you. Right? If you look at that image and you see a young woman whose feet is being washed by an older woman as she sits on a bench out front outside of a family planning clinic, then if your reaction is, she's a sinner, what does that say about you? Is, is that true for every young woman sitting in a bar, in a, on a bench out front of a family clan, plan, planning clinic? Absolutely not. How do you know that the, the older woman isn't a nurse who works in there? Right? How do you know the younger woman? 
Um, how do you know the younger woman did something you disagree with? How do you know that she's not sitting there trying to figure things out for herself? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know anything? But when we say, oh, there, that's a sinner. No, that's a, that guy's a sinner because of the way he's dressed and the hat he's wearing. And he's way too fashionable. He must be gay. And the priest shouldn't be washing his feet. Well, how do you know he just doesn't like to dress like that? How do you know he isn't gay but has repented of those sins? No, I'm not saying that's a sin. How do you know? How do you know that he isn't a desperately devout follower of Jesus who's finding his way, right? who's still struggling with his life, with his convictions? How do you know the woman holding the baby in front of a bus is a migrant just because the bus says Chicago on it and Texas has a habit of sending people completely unprepared and without the proper clothes and without the proper uh, support to northern, cold, frigid cities? Is that, is that why you can assume? Isabel. Now, Tene asks the question, what does feet washing in the ancient world mean? What it means is it's, a, it's an act of hospitality, right? Washing somebody's feet is an act of hospitality. It's a Mediterranean, it was a Mediterranean thing. I'm, it's probably in other places as well, but I know in the Mediterranean in particular, because it was, you know, if you were walking around Judea, it was dusty. And your feet got gross and grimy. And they didn't sit in chairs. They sat on the floor with their feet up, right? Your, your feet would be up. Your knees would be up. Your feet would be present to the person sitting beside you. Like face level sometimes. Like they, they, they reclined on pillows. They sat on the floor. They didn't sit at a table like, like, I, like my kids and I sit when we're eating supper. So washing feet, it was a, it was a really big deal. It was a really big, uh, it was a gift that you were offering your guests. And, and, and the owner of the home would have somebody in the home, a servant or one of the children, um, would wash the feet of all the guests so that everybody could be comfortable together. Now, biblically speaking, washing the feet, yes, still a, an act of absolute hospitality. But it goes way beyond that. So these people are freaking out because Jesus wouldn't wash the feet of sinners. Or they're freaking out because you have to, you can't be a sinner and follow Jesus. Or I don't know, whatever other thing they're going on about. Almost to a person. Of all the responses that, I, that I've seen on, on X, formerly known as Twitter. The responses are are people who just do not understand what Jesus was truly doing in that moment and what he was asking of his disciples in that moment. In, in the Bible on uh, Maundy Thursday, something we're going to do in about 40 days, Jesus strips down, puts his tunic around his waist, towel in hand, and he goes between his disciples washing their feet. He's, you know, this is, this is an act of kindness and it's an act of love. And it is an, it's what the servant would do. It is not what the master, it is not what the teacher, it is not what the person of authority, the person of power, the person of position, the person of authority, it is not what they would do. As a matter of fact, it would be shameful for them to do it. And yet Jesus goes between his disciples washing their feet. Now, again, the response online has been, well, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. And, and he says to Peter, because Peter freaks out. He's like, oh, well, if, don't wash my feet. And Jesus is like, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can't follow me. And Peter says, well, fine, then wash my whole body from head to toe. And Jesus says, you don't need your whole body washed. You just need your feet washed. Those who have already bathed only need their feet washed. And so they're saying, well, see, that's Jesus saying. Once your sins are forgiven, you just need, it's not about sin. Even that statement isn't about sin. This whole thing is about Jesus providing his disciples a very, very physical understanding, physical example of what it means to be a Christian leader. And what it means to be a Christian leader is something that he says over and over and over again. If you want to be great, 
you must serve all. If you want to lead, you must be a servant. He was the servant king, right? And that's, that's the point of the washing of the feet. I'm showing you, I'm, I'm, as a Christian, I am washing your feet because I want you to know that I am your servant. And so when you see the imagery of the police officer washing the feet of the young man, it's saying, I, the police officer is saying, I am your servant. I am your servant. The older woman in front of the family planning clinic. I am your servant. The, 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 the man washing the feet of the, the, the older indigenous man. I am your servant. Now, again, one of the responses, well, I, what did somebody post something along the lines of, uh, I watched that commercial. It looks like a whole lot of white people are ser have to be servants to everybody. Yes. Yes. Christians have to be servants to everybody. Whether you're white or black or Chinese or whatever. We are called to be servants to all. What would it take for a police officer in real life to do that? What would it take for a priest on the beach? I'm assuming in California, just because of the way it's all set up. But you know, again, another assumption, right? And assumptions make asses of you and me. But what would it take for a priest to wash the feet of, of if, if indeed the person is gay? What would it take for a priest to wash the feet of a gay man in public along a beach? What would it take for, for a person, for an American, to wash the feet of, uh, of an asylum seeker who's being shipped off to Chicago? What would it take? Great humility. Right? Such great depth of humility and love and this is who we're supposed to be right our love as christians is supposed to well it's supposed to lead us into contact with people who are you know completely different than ourselves what would it take for for a senior woman a mature woman working uh, protesting at a clinic Right, protesting at an abortion clinic. What would it take for her to wash the feet of a young woman who's just come out after having the procedure? Oh. That's who we're supposed to be. Nothing to do with the other person's sin. It has everything to do with you and I. And that's what I've said that. How many times have I done a video where I've said, this faith of ours is a it's supposed to challenge us. It's not for us to put on to others. It's about challenging us. And yet the people that are freaking out are watching that video. And instead of saying, oh, that's the kind of devotion that Jesus asks me to have. Oh my gosh, look at how I would look at my, I'm feeling all this stuff. These are my preconceived notions. These are my biases that are coming up as I watch this, as I watch this commercial. And Jesus is saying, yes, even when you're feeling like this, you should be living like this. They pointed at the other. Oh, they're a sinner. That's why I don't have to do it. No, 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 no. You don't get off the hook for that. There's no, you don't get off the hook. <laughs> you don't get off the hook that way. Your love is supposed to be radical. And your hospitality is supposed to be wild. We're supposed to be something so different in the world. Right? We're supposed to be something so different in the world. So, for me, when I watched that video, for me, when I watched that video, what I, what I saw, because you know, you, your your notions do come up. You're watching it. You can't help it. It's it's what you experienced in the past. It comes forward. It informs what it is you're seeing. And and as I'm watching it, I'm going, oh yeah, no, that's where I'm called. Yeah, no, I got that. I I get it now. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling that. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. So who in my life? Who is it in my life that I have, I might have that kind of reaction to in the world? So when it comes to that video and all the people that are freaking out, oh my God, it's sin, it's sin, it's sin. I can't believe it's sin, this, sin, that. The other are not saved. They need this, they need that. Nope, they've missed it. They're focusing on they're focusing on the people in those images that they disagree with, the people in those images that they distrust. They're focusing on the people in the images that that they've, judged as somehow unworthy. 
they've missed the point. The people they're supposed to focus on are the ones who are kneeling down and washing the feet of those they feel are unworthy. Each one of those images is supposed to remind us that there are people out there that we are going to find really going to find it really really difficult to love. We are going to find really really difficult to to connect with. And those are the ones that Jesus is calling us to. Those are the ones that Jesus is asking us. Love them radically. Show them absolute hospitality. To follow me, this is what you do in these situations. If you happen to see the video, if, you have, if you've seen it, great. Watch it again. Watch it again and look for that. Watch it again and look for that. And ask yourself that, like, follow the example of those people who are washing the feet. Right? And ask yourself, who is it that I might find difficult to be that close to? Who is it that I would find it that difficult to be that connected to? I can't remember if it was Epictetus or if it was, I think it was Marcus Aurelius, but he probably stole it from somebody else. The obstacle is the way, right? That's the way forward. Where that discomfort is, that's the way forward. Tene, thank you so much for that question. I don't know if that was the answer you wanted, but I'm going to reiterate um, could you tell us the symbolism of washing feet in the old world? It was about making your guests feel comfortable. For Jesus, it was about it was about humbling yourself to wash the feet of your students, of your servants, of those you think are are less than yourself. Um, yeah, and ultimately that video, that commercial, that's exactly what it shows us. That's who we are supposed to be. Those people that we, we might look down on. Those are exactly the ones we are supposed, whose feet we are supposed to wash. Amen.